Welcome back. This is uh, David of Two Story Props. We're working on an earpiece for uh, our Toma helmet for Daft Punk. And I just wanted to take a, a moment to talk about fiberglassing in general. Uh, first up is safety. You always want to take the best precautions and breathing this stuff in. So that's why we recommend picking up a respirator with and, and being sh making sure that the filters are new or clean. Um, uh, we work outside, so we have maximum ventilation, but if you're working in a garage, uh, try to have the garage door open or have some kind of fume hood. Um, if you don't have a respirator, um, buy one, obviously, but uh, a dust mask will prevent some of the fumes from coming in. It's got this little, you know, little filter here, but it's not, this is not intended for chemical use. This is intended to prevent dust from entering your lungs. So that's why, you know, get yourself a, a good respirator. Um, make sure it seals tight up against your face. Um, um, now we typically use fiberglass cloth and there are two types of fiberglass, at least two types of fiberglass, at least for general use. Um, there's fiberglass mat, which is this random array of fiberglass fibers. And this is actually stronger to use because it is a random array of fibers and it, it does not allow for any, any kind of patterning to happen. Um, but we typically use fiberglass cloth, which is a woven, more flexible uh, cloth. This can bend, but it has very, you know, it has a, a, a lot of trouble getting over complex curves. Uh, fiberglass cloth can get over complex curves if you, if you, you know, pat at it and brush it enough. It will curve over very complex uh, parts. Um, the downside to using this is that it is weaker than the fiberglass mat and that is because it has a regular weave and thus allows for flexing. So when we're using fiberglass mat we typically do it in layers and when you layer it instead of doing it along the weave we typically rotate it about 45 degrees and that way you have a a more random it's not actually random but it's it's closer to how this works than just how this works so if you're doing two layers or multiple layers uh, do rotate your pieces um, and that way you can maximize your strength um, when using the fiberglass cloth now the way I typically do fiberglass cloth is the pieces I cut end up being about the size of my hand. Um, if you are following along the tutorial on the blog, uh, you'll see the picture of the uh, the piece of fiberglass cloth with a like a credit card sized card on it, and it's a, that's about the size I work. Sometimes I'll make bigger pieces, more square pieces, but. Uh, you know, for, for beginning purposes, you know, this is a good size to use. It's probably about four and a half inches by three inches or so. Um, now, when you are actually fiberglassing, when you're actually pressing the resin into the piece, um, you can brush the resin on like this, but it's not going to penetrate all of the fibers. And for fiberglassing, it's, it's critical to make sure that the piece is thoroughly soaked. You're not just putting resin below it. You're not just sandwiching the, the fiberglass in between layers of resin. You have to actually push the brush into the fibers of the fiberglass to make sure that the resin is seeping into every little nook and cranny it can. Um, that way you also get thinner, more consistent layers. You can control how the fiberglass lays across the part. Here you can see I'm pushing it into my fingers. Can't really do that when you're brushing into it. Um, 
Now sometimes you can kind of press the resin into it like this um, if you have multiple dry layers of cloth that you're laying up. Um, but I'll always come back to doing this. Um, sometimes you'll get uh, these frayed edges which is pretty typical of fiberglass cloth. Um, generally when the casting is done I will grind this out with a Dremel um, because it's very sharp and if you're still working on the piece with gloves it'll catch on the catch on the latex and tear it and everything so um, I'll usually grind that off um, or when you are done with your fiberglassing you can mix up some more resin and just paint in a liquid co liquid coat and that will cover up most of your little bumps and sharp edges. Uh, this is general fiberglassing practices from Two Story Props.